Remember back in the day when you learned about base 10 blocks and you learned that these were the ones, these are the tens, hundreds, and thousands. And the only reason this system was used is because we assumed that these little guys were the simplest unit possible and that everything revolved around this little guy once we collected them and put them all together. So this was assumed to be the whole. Well, what if we change the rules a bit and say that this big guy is going to be the one whole unit? Everything changes because now in grade seven, we're going to consider this to be the whole and not that. I know it sounds confusing, but let me explain. We represented it with the number one since it's one hole. If we had two of them, of course, we'd say two holes and that would be a two and so on. But then what does this become? It's not a hundred anymore. It becomes a part of this. It becomes one part, one fraction, if you may. We can convert that into a decimal value because fractions are decimals and likewise. So what we do now is we say, how many of these, how many parts do we need to click together of these guys here to make this big whole unit? Now, stop for a second and think about it. We've got these flats stacked on top of each other from top to bottom. We've got 10 stacks, which means one of them is one part out of 10 or one tenth. As a fraction, it's one over 10. And as a decimal, decimal one, because if you remember back to grade six, you learned that the first spot after the decimal is called the tenth spot. So we have one tenth. If we had two of them, that would be two out of 10 and that would be decimal two. If we had three or four, it'd be, um, you know, corresponding to that value. So if we had four, it'd be four out of 10 and decimal four and so on. But what are these then? How much are these represented by? Well, if you used a little bit of logic here, we've got 10 of these stacks, these 10 of these flat guys on top of each other. And how much of these rods are needed to build one of these flats? 10 of them. So we've got 10 rods in the first stack. We've got 10 in the second row, 10 in the third row. We've got 10 groups of 10, which makes 100. We need 100 of these rods to make this here. So we call that 100th. Put the TH at the end to indicate it's a fraction. It's a part. As a fraction and as a decimal, because the second spot after the decimal is called a hundredth. And what do we know now? If we had five or six of these guys, let's say we had five, that would be five out of a hundred and that would be decimal zero five. So these guys here, the little tiny babies, we need a thousand of them to make this cube, which means this is one part out of a thousand or one thousandth. You got to put the TH one over a thousand decimal zero zero one, because for the same reason we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So the third spot after the decimal is the thousandth spot. Let's use that knowledge now and learn how to represent numbers using these blocks and then how to add numbers using these base 10 blocks, which is our ultimate goal here in the lesson. If it says model the decimal number 1.402 and if you read it properly, you need to say it like this. You need to say one whole and 402 thousandths. Why 402 thousandths? Because we always say the value of the last digit. And since that's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, we got to say one whole and 402 thousandths. Anytime you see a decimal, you, gotta, you have to say the word and. Step one, write your number down and indicate the value of each digit. We write all the values underneath and then we just draw it out. We need one whole. I'll give you a whole. We need four tenths. Let's do it. That's two. We need two more. Anyway, enough of that. We've got zero hundredths, so we don't draw anything. We need two thousandths. Now let's use that knowledge and apply it to addition. How do I know this question is asking me to add this word? This word means add. It means plus. Find the sum of these two numbers. Step one. Remember step one from last time? It still applies. Write the values of each digit. Draw the blocks out. One whole. Two tenths. Remember these are tenths now because we need ten of them to make this whole. We need six hundredths, which are the rods now, and we need seven thousandths. The word or the meaning of the 
term add means show me more blocks, which means I'm not done drawing yet. I need to show more blocks. I need to show two holes. I need to show zero more tenths. So leave the tenths alone. These flats are done. We need six hundredths and we need eight thousandths. The rules you learned back in grade two and grade three with adding base 10 blocks still apply here. Anytime you have 10 blocks of the same kind, you need to click them together and turn them into the next kind. Let me show you what that looks like. I've got a lot of thousandths, which means I'm going to have to click them together into 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to X them out like this, and I'm going to turn them into a rod because that's what these these thousandths become. They become these rods, which we now call hundredths. Now let's move on. Any excess of some other kind of block. Well, we do have a lot of these rods. We have a lot of them. So let's click them together. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's move these ones here. Let's go seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're going to put those together. We're going to X them out. We're going to scribble them off. And you know what they turn into? they turn into a tenth. They turn into these flats. Now, it doesn't matter where I put my flat. I can put it on this side. I can put it on this side. It doesn't really matter because in the end, we're just going to count them all. So now I think we're done. We've regrouped everything that needs to be regrouped. And now we're just going to count everything. But before we do that, let's make sure we're organized. Let's put indicate that the first value is the holes and then the decimal and then the tenths and then the hundredths and then the thousandths. Let's count the holes. We've got one, two, three. We got, we've got three of the tenths as well. We've got three of the hundredths. Where are they? One, two, three. And how many thousandths do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five. Let's double check our answer. 